Thanks for uh, first. Uh, thanks all for uh, for taking the time for this interview. Yeah. Um, try and talk a little about uh, your childhood, growing up. Uh, I mean, it was it was cool to me. I mean, it wasn't like we was poor. We wasn't rich, but uh, you know, my mom and and dad provided whatever you know I needed. Uh, you know, most of the time they was at work, so I pretty much stayed at my grandma's house. And um, in the daytime, my grandma, I would, you know, spend with my grandma and my auntie and all my little cousins and everybody else around the neighborhood. Like that was, you know, my grandma's house was like the house to go to, to go play at. So, I mean, growing up was, I mean, it was nice. It was cool. I loved it. I enjoyed it. And in school, how were <laughs> were you, you trouble making in school? Or? Uh, you said your your auntie's house I, was the, the fun I, place to be. I, I wasn't I wasn't so much the troublemaker, you know. I, I have a I had a hard time of um, listening, you know. I, I didn't I didn't pay attention. I didn't do I didn't do the things my mom and dad told me to do. As far as school wise, I went to school in school suspension, suspended from school. Uh, I even went to this school. I had so many referrals that um, it's like a school outside of our school. It's called DOC. That's where they sent like the kids who was like a nuisance or got too many referrals or just didn't want to learn. They shipped them off to that school, yeah. and uh, yeah, I ended up getting sent there my uh, my junior year of high school. If uh, five year old uh, Janelle could write to the thirty year old Janelle, what what would he have write? Written? Ooh, man, a five year old Janelle. Or maybe eight year old. Eight year old Janelle. Any any year old Janelle, probably. Uh, that's a tough question. You might have to. Uh, I might have to email you that <laughs> that answer because that's that's gonna take a while for me to think about. But probably, ooh, just listen to your parents. That would be that would be the main. In one sentence, that would be it to sum it up. Listen to my parents. Yeah. How do you get into basketball? Was your parents? Or? Yeah. Well, the the you know my dad story is for Christmas he bought me all three you know he bought me a baseball, football, basketball, and a soccer ball I think maybe yeah. I don't know and uh, I just picked the basketball out of all of them and I I just stuck with it. Did you have any players you looked up to? Any uh, idols? Not, I was I was weird when it comes to to that. Besides Michael Jordan, any other NBA guy or college guy when I was growing up, I didn't look up to because I felt like, you know, I looked up to the guys that was around me a lot every day. You know, I really looked up to my dad for what he did in in sports. And uh, I have a cousin, uh, Donnie Matthews, who did really well in basketball and in school that I really looked up to and a couple of guys around my uh, my neighborhood because uh, like I don't know just growing up you you see these guys every day and you play I used to play basketball with them every day and <laughs> I used to say man you know I I want to jump like him you know I didn't I'm telling you, besides Michael Jordan, there's no other guy I can think of that I said I wanted to be like. You know, it was either uh, my god brother Tyrone or uh, they had two guys, the Armstrong brothers that I that I looked up to. I used to hang around them a lot, and uh, yeah, so pretty much pretty much family and, and the guys that I grew up with. How did the game affect your life? Was it a 
pastime or was it something you you always thought of uh, in school? I mean, anybody that knows me knows basketball was pretty much all I ever wanted to do. That's why I never did good in school. Like I used to cut class, go play basketball. Like this, I I really can't think of nothing. If you can, you can ask the people that's closest to me, and you can ask them, could you see Janelle doing anything else besides basketball? And they can tell you no, because that's all I ever, that's all I ever done. I was like a gym rat. I stayed in the gym. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go to to so and so house for a birthday party. Let's go to the basketball court. Let's do this. So basketball. If it wasn't for basketball, I honestly, I'm I'm afraid of where I would be if it wasn't for basketball. Cause I don't I don't think I would be as successful as I am. I don't think. When did you realize you had a talent? I don't know. I still don't realize it, you know, because, uh, like I say, my, my whole family, I come from a family of athletes. So growing up, you know, it was like tough criticism. Growing up, my dad, like my dad didn't shower me with, oh, my son is the greatest. Oh, you know, my son this, my son that. It was almost like tough love, you know. And even to this day, it's still tough love. Like, he came... He came and watched me play a couple of years ago when I was at Denmark. And after the game, it wasn't like, good game, son. It was like, you should have done this better. You should have done that better. So I think until, until my dad is able to sit down and watch me play, and after a game, come up to me and be like, son, that's one heck of a game, I think, okay. I think then it hit me like okay I'm I'm okay at this basketball thing. At what age did you begin to strive for a career? <laughs> Man. Probably I don't even know. Like I I I honestly never thought beyond where I was at. You know, like when I was in junior college, I didn't think, you know, I don't know. I like I I honestly don't know. You know, cuz uh I just always just lived in the in the moment, you know? I I just took it one step at a time. And then when I was in University of New Orleans, um, I was presented around the time I was in college, I was presented with an opportunity to go play professional basketball. And then that's when I went, you know, but before then I never really said, okay, I want to go play overseas. It was pretty much the NBA or nothing, really. Because I really didn't know too much about overseas basketball at the time. So it was a, it was a tough decision to to make the tr transition to European basketball. No, it wasn't tough. It was more. It was more like. You know, I was getting at the age of where, if this basketball don't work, I have to find something else to do. You know, and that was a tough. That was a tough for me. Tough thing for me to handle. Cause I always wanted to play basketball, you know, but you know. So when the opportunity presented itself, it was an easy decision. Okay, I, you know, go wherever to play. So. Do you feel blessed? Yeah, always, every day, every day, because it's you know I I know plenty of guys that would love this opportunity who didn't get the chances that I got. Plenty of guys who, you know, I know a couple of people who, who's not here right now that would have really loved to see me 
you know, where I'm at now. Because when they was living, maybe I wasn't doing as well as I am now. You know, I was the little bad boy, you know, running around the neighborhood or just doing whatever. And, uh, and now I'm, I don't know how many years, 10, 10 years, 9 years, uh, playing professional basketball, traveling around the world. I've met plenty of great people, seen places. Uh, I've tried foods I never thought I'd try. So, yeah, I feel blessed every day. Did it ever make you have a sense of urgency to play uh, for your, your friends that you lost? Uh, not so much a sense of, ur a sense of urgency, but it just made me appreciate what I'm doing a lot more. You know, knowing that, you know, my my friends or my family members that I know, like if they was here, would just have the biggest smile on their faces, you know. And it just make you know, makes you realize that, you know, that I'm not, you know, this right here, I'm doing it for me because I love to do it. But I'm also, it's it's a lot bigger than me, you know, because it's a lot of people, it's a lot of people back home never been out of where I'm from, never been out of the state of Florida. I've never been out of, of Florida. Never been out of Florida. So, I mean, especially with the social network of, of Facebook and stuff like that, when, you know, I have you know, kids or, or even the guys older than me, I'm able to post pictures of me playing basketball or, or you know, where, wherever country I'm at. And when I go home, it's almost like an, uh, you know, it's like, guys, hey, man, I seen that picture of you, man. I'm, I'm so happy, man. I'm so happy for you, man, because I'm glad you got an opportunity to do it because I couldn't do it or I didn't get the opportunity. So it's almost like, I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it for myself. But I also realize it's a lot bigger than me as far as, you know, don't take this opportunity and blow it and, and, and waste it, you know, because you you letting not only yourself down, but you letting a lot of other people down. So. Did you ever take anything from your, from your pastime in Venezuela or Denmark or Finland? Has it changed your, your perspective? Perspective on the world. Yeah. Made me um, just made me be a lot happier, you know, especially especially in like Denmark and, and Sweden, and uh, you know, especially my time in Venezuela because Venezuela, it's a lot of pro, it's, it's like it's a lot of poor people there, but. No matter how little or how much they have, they're happy with what they got. You know, when I when I was there, the last city I was in, we used to go to this lady's house, and she had like no floor, like it, her floor was dirt. And but she used to invite us over for dinner, you know, and they was happy. They wasn't worried about like not having a floor. You know, and, and when you come to Denmark, you know, people are just just walking downtown, just enjoying life with their coffee or tea or a beer or just whatever. You know, instead of when when I'm back home seeing people, you know, mad all the time for just the smallest things, you know. So it made me just appreciate a lot of things that I have going for me in my life. Um, when you're going to retire, hopefully in a... Many years forward. Yeah, yeah. What What do you think the basketball has brought to your life? Basketball has has brought me a sense of. It has made me, probably the strongest and toughest person I, I think I can I can be mentally and physically. It 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 made me realize that I can accomplish anything, whatever, whatever the task big or small that is in front of me, I know I can do it because of what basketball has pushed me to do, you know. Uh, so, uh, you know, 
So 10 years from now, when I retire, I'm ready for it because I, I, you know, I can do anything. But well, that's how I feel like, and, and, and basketball has, has really put that upon me, you know. Uh, <clears throat> so whatever the, the job or task is, I'm up for it. What do you think you're going to do? It's going to be something with basketball, I think. You know, I, I coach the kids, and coaching the kids is something I've been doing. You know, when I was in Venezuela, I used to coach kids there. Came here, coach kids, and uh, when I go to the states, I try to work out as many kids as as, as possible. And um, yeah, there's gonna be something with coaching, or uh, working out kids. So it's gonna be something involving basketball, even though I might walk away from professional basketball as a player. I think I still have a lot of, of basketball knowledge and um, to to give. Off the court. Do you think you ever want to <coughs> see uh, General Smith, head coach, double NCA? Oh man, yeah, yeah, I can see myself that. I I, I can see myself being a, a head coach in NCAA. Uh, yeah. Perhaps striving for NBA also. Mm, I ain't gonna think that far ahead. <coughs> I'm going to keep it at NCAA right now. Yeah. Then when I get to NCAA, about maybe eight, ten years, then I start thinking about the NBA. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Obviously, you never made it in the NBA. Yeah. Um, do you think it's it's something you're, <coughs> you're disappointed on? Or is it something you'll say, oh, I made it in Europe. I'm, I was the MVP, MVP in Denmark, Sweden, Finland. Mm -hmm. Do you think that made up for for not making it? A small, a small part of me. My mom always taught me to to live, you know, as a man to live with your decisions, whether that's good or bad. You know, no regrets. You made that decision. You 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 made your bed, so lay in it. But a small part of me wish I'd listen to my father, and um, if I'd listen, I know if I'd listen to him, I probably would have, I probably would have had a decent, decent shot at the NBA. But with that being said, I don't, I don't regret. I ain't gonna say regret, but I don't. I'm not mad at myself for the decisions I made. You know, I made those decisions. Those decisions. I live with those decisions, and in a way, I'm kind of thankful, you know, because it taught me a lot. I learned a lot, and like I say, I've visited, you know, Venezuela. I've been to, I've been to countries that I never, ever in my life thought I would ever, ever visit. Met great, great people. You know, to I have created friendships with people in Finland, in Sweden, in Venezuela, in, in Denmark that that I will have with me forever. You know, so yeah, I did make it to the NBA. Poor decisions, but like you said, being in Denmark, Sweden, and Finland kind of made up for it. Janelle Smith, uh, thanks. Anytime. Anytime.